Hey, I just wanted to jump in here really quick and let you know that this video was filmed a couple of weeks ago before the horrific on-camera murder of George Floyd. So if it seems like I am being insensitive or not addressing what's going on, it's just because the video was pre-filmed. I just wanted to get it out there for you guys. And uh, we're gonna talk about what's going on in the next video coming up. Hey buddies. What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Pam and today I am answering your questions. Things you asked me, things you wanted to know. Nothing was off the table. Uh, just a surprising amount of you want to know about my tattoos. So we're going to get into that stuff today. And we're going to pot, repot this, uh, what did Kaylee Ellen call it? Giant ass Monstera. Mine's not nearly as cool as hers, but uh, you know, she big. Oh, we're back on the floor, kids. My God, I'm too old to be on the floor. Ow. This is one of my first big house plants, probably my first big house plant. I've had it for maybe uh, um, seven, eight, seven years, six years. I've had it sometime longer than five years and sometime less than eight years. <laughs> It's, it's looking a little rough. When I first got this big mama, she was a cutting or a separation from a much larger pot of this Monstera. I have no idea how old it is. It definitely needs a restaking, a repotting, and just some TLC. It's a bit, it's just such a mess. It's, it's same, really. Ow. So I put um, a very slippery, it turns out, um, shower curtain on the ground. So uh, hopefully we won't make as much of a mess as the last time I sat on the floor repotting Monsteras with you guys. Do you remember? So many good things have come since that video. Uh, this video won't be nearly as inspiring. Okay, so we'll just let's get into the dirt. Okay, hoping that once I add in a few things that this will make enough to fill up this, frankly, too large, um, plastic pot. Probably more of two sizes up than one size up, uh, but it's what we have. And frankly, once I get this thing potted up, sedated up and looking decent, I want to be able to leave it alone for a little while. I would also love to get it a Soltec light for my birthday. I'm just, just throwing that out there to the universe. So on Instagram, I asked you guys, and yes, I wrote it down on paper because I have to film on my phone. So we, <laughs> you see what I deal with. Um, so I have written down all the questions that I got on Instagram when I asked you guys what you'd like to know. Uh, any topic, whatever you wanted, I would talk about it. So I'm gonna read through these questions while we repot this, let's get to it. Also uh, decided to go full white today and uh, this is a white claw. Um, lemon which i've never had so we're gonna we're gonna do this uh it got warm out and i thought i'll buy a 12 pack of this like i might be good at some point <sighs> better i'm an asshole um i made this i made this um six months ago when I originally intended to repot this plant. So finally get to use that. So that plant chick wanted to know if there were any really popular plants in the community right now that just don't do it for me. Uh, people ask me this a lot. Usually I will say like, I just, I'm not too in on the Syngonium tribe. Um, I just find them a bit fragile. Um, I gotta say, I think that the other one that I just don't have like really a lot of interest in having that a lot of people love, probably like, shh, shh, I say caladiums. And it's not because they're not beautiful. It's just because I am confident, confident that I will kill those things. So I'm going to add in this um, orchid potting mix just to give it some chunkiness. Juliet in Hamburg asked who my favorite band or artist is. So I'm going to tell you guys, you guys asked a lot of like, what's your favorite or your number one or whatever things. And that sends me into a panic. I can't decide anything. I'm terrible at making decisions. Um, so I will probably give a few answers for everything because, because I just, I can't. 
Like, which one of my personalities likes something the most today, you know? I don't know. Ah! Oh, fuck. Oh. I don't think I have enough potting mix. Peach. Artist or band. Um, I could give you a few of the of my favorites. Uh, Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. <sighs> Love Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. I would say of all the concerts that I've been to, the one I have cried the most at were probably the two that I saw him. Uh, Florence and the Machine. Love. Um, Faith No More. Long time favorite. Um, Faith No More was actually the first favorite band that I ever had. For a long time, Acid Bath was uh, one of my favorite bands. Like if we're gonna get into the rock and metal category. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of favorites over the years, but I would say um, standing the longest and strongest would probably be Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds. Um, and Florence is coming up pretty close. Um, I've loved everything that she's done for years. Growing up, I was very into metal. Um, that was all I listened to actually. I was very few outside of metal things that I was interested in um, and I'm glad that I kind of grew out of that because it definitely kept me away from a lot of other music. There was also a very heavy anti-rap sentiment in like the 90s and even in the 80s probably with like people who were into metal and when I look back on it now it kind of makes me sad because I feel like it's like almost a form of like racism that I sort of participated in without really even thinking about it because I grew up around all white people basically. <laughs> it's gonna fucked up, man. It's the shit you realize if you think about stuff when you get older. You know, check yourself. And now, quite a lot of rap and hip hop that I thoroughly enjoy. So Becca De La Plants asked, which one of my tattoos is my favorite? Um, you know, that's a good question. Um, again, hard to decide things sometimes I would say. Um, aesthetically, I might have to strip a little for this. Hold on. Okay, I hope everybody watched the ads. Okay, this is the most skin you're getting on my channel ever. I think that this one aesthetically is one of my favorite designs. I really love this tattoo. I like where it sits. And um, I don't get to see it very much, you know, because it's on my back. Talking subject wise, it would be this tattoo of my cat as the Virgin Mary. To start the world's weakest OnlyFans now. While we're on the subject of tattoos, Somebody asked about my safety pin tattoo on my wrist. Uh, they wanted to know the significance of that. Um, I don't know if they're aware of uh, what the safety pin was a few years ago. There was um, sort of a movement, I guess, to use the safety pin as a symbol of an ally. So that would be to people of color or um, marginalized communities like the LGBTQIA community. And I really liked that. I thought it was a very simple and safe way to show maybe a complete stranger who maybe might need your help that you are a person that they could trust. But yeah, that's why it's there, just to make it abundantly fucking clear that I'm not a goddamn conservative. Not to say that, no, that's, you know, yeah, no, we're gonna go with that. So if that's why you're asking, yes, you are right, that's why I have it. Uh. Okay, what else can we get on followed about? Um... So Nicole from My Clean Leaves asked me if I could live anywhere in the United States, where would it be? I actually think about this a lot. Not necessarily because I want to leave where I am, but just because I think it's super weird that I can never think of anywhere else. I think it's just because I've lived in Massachusetts my whole life, but it's just every other place that I think of seems to come with drawbacks that I'm not willing to have. <laughs> um, I don't want to live in a red state. Um, I know there's lovely ones, but um, I don't want to be there. I don't want to live anywhere where there aren't seasons as much as I can't stand winter. I think give me another decade in this godforsaken hellscape that I live in um, that I will probably be over it at that point. But I can only see myself going to a more rural place. I don't want to live in the city anymore. So I can tell you that much. I would love to live somewhere that is not the fucking city. <laughs> so my fool self put a whole bunch of bamboo sticks in here and just like went crazy tying strings to them. So this is gonna be really fun, but it's fine because I have a lot of questions to answer. Okay, so what plant is bringing you the most joy currently? 
and that was basic M plants. Well, I know, um, I will cut in some footage because I don't think I can let this plant go of the orchid and Hoya that I have right now that are reblooming for the second time. Both of them are on their second bloom. So I am extremely excited about that. And people sometimes will ask how I got that to happen. I do have a video where I show my rescue orchid process, or at least the one that I was trying, which uh, has seemed to go well for me so far. But please understand that I basically, it's, it's Michael G, I think his name's Michael G Orchids. I'll put his name on the screen. Um, but basically I followed his instructions to like rescue some clearance orchids. Um, and then I just, I'm a chronic underwaterer and I think that that is just enough stress for a lot of plants to end up blooming for me. Like it's kind of, it's kind of sucky to say uh, in that way because I, I know it's not very helpful, but that really is it is I just I, I, I forget to water a lot um, and I let days go by without watering and sometimes I think that that is why my plants just continue to bloom for me because they're trying not to die. <laughs> so you can see how it was basically just vining over the pot when I got it and I didn't really know any better at first to train it upward so I just let it continue to vine and so now I'm kind of having to retrain it all these years later now that I know that they'll stand up if you train them that way. So I've got a bit of a crossbar here I think I'm gonna have to cut off. Ooh. Hot Plant Summer, hey, Hot Plant Summer asked what initially radicalized me uh, politically. A lot of times I, I'll joke and I'll say George Carlin, but um, for the most part, I don't really know. I, I I just remember always being politically aware of things, even when I was just, a, you know, like a kid that didn't really know anything. I remember that my dad used to have me do my George Bush impression for his friends. Um, <laughs> and I would say, not gonna do it. Not gonna have new taxes or whatever the hell he said. And <laughs> my dad just thought it was hilarious. And I remember that I always read like Cracked Magazine and stuff when I was a kid and they always had a lot of political commentary. So I was just always very politically aware. I would say what radicalized me was probably my experience in Catholic school. I was there until fifth grade and my fifth grade teacher was, uh, how do we put it back in the church days? Um, an asshole. I remember he yelled at us a lot and there was a lot of group punishments for individual actions. I believe he was a military guy, I'm not too sure. He certainly acted like he wanted to be one, you know? Uh, we used to call him Sergeant Doopy, I believe. Yeah, Mr. Doopy, if you're out there, fuck you. I remember he got really mad at us because one kid didn't do their homework. So obviously all of us are a problem and we must all suffer. So he made this uh, rules of the classroom, you know, numbered list or whatever. And I remember number five, it was rule number five. I still remember this. Number five was all homework must be completed every night. And um, I wrote on a little piece of paper, vote no on rule five. <laughs> and I taped it over the inkwell in my desk. Well, he did not like that at all nor did he find it funny. He took recess away from the entire class, uh, who already hated me, <laughs> asked a lot of questions. And he basically helped cement uh, the class's general dis distaste for me. But I can clearly remember that being one of the moments in my childhood that really drove home the fact that people will abuse their power, um, people will do unfair things, and even if you're just this silly kid making a political joke because that's what you saw all around your city were vote no on, you know, rule whatever signs. Um, yeah, I was just a kid and he uh, screamed at me so loud and so close to my face that I can remember spit hitting me in the face. And then I had to go to the principal's office which they would announce over the loudspeaker so the entire school would know. And the principal was a nun. So she came with all the, all the, uh, the threats of hell. <laughs> oh, this is so scary. 
Okay. Yeah, even though I was kind of being a turd in that class, it was just one of many times that I had been humiliated in that school for just simple childlike behaviors. And um, I think that that just really gave me a bad outlook on people in, in positions of power and showed me how much that they can do to you if they want to. And side note, the priest who ran uh, my church and the school was um, relocated for, you know, exactly why you think he would be relocated. So long answer short, early exposure to fucked up corrupt people. Pammy from Pammy's Planty Things asked, if I had all the money in the world and all the room in the world, what plant would I buy? And honestly, it would not be anything super strange or exotic. It would be a big ass bird of paradise. I'm talking 20 feet tall, just wah, huge. So Emily before asked what kind of soil mix that I use for my plants. Generally, it is the same thing. I use um, a company called Green Tree. Oh, hello, little Robin. Hi, I have a bird feeder outside my window. Oh my God, hi, you're so cute. It's that Green Tree um, Growers Blend. And then sometimes I will add in like orchid bark or activate, um, or horticultural charcoal. So Green Arts Jade asked, how did you get so awesome? I'm struggling. Um, I don't know how to answer that question. So I don't really always feel very awesome, um, spoiler. I will guess what you mean is um, perhaps confident or something along those lines because that tends to be what people mean when they ask me stuff like that. It's, and I've said this before, uh, the last time I was repotting a Monstera, uh, that it is sincerely a lack of fucks. Um, and, and it's not that I don't care about things because I care about a lot of things very much. I think if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you hear a lot about the things I care about. But what I don't care about is bullshit. And um, I feel like a lot of the things that upset us, that throw us off our game, that keep us from being our best selves, it's fucking bullshit. It's what your mom will think of you or what your friend is gonna, you know, your judgmental friend is gonna think about you or what the people that you don't like from high school will think about you. And a lot of times people just don't, they don't do for themselves because they're so worried about everybody else. Another thing I will say is therapy. Therapy is wonderful. And therapy is not just for people who are crazy or are even depressed or even if you feel like you don't really have a lot of problems with yourself but it seems like everybody else is the problem you know it's when you need therapy <laughs> i can honestly say um that i am at a point in my life where i am happy and it's been a long road to get here and to be able to say that a year after going through the worst and most devastating loss of my entire life is pretty good because it means even that horrendous loss couldn't shake my gratitude and my my passion you know you know what it is and it sounds fucking hokey but it's really true it's two things it's not taking things personally because other people's actions toward you, unless you're being an asshole, which is a good self-examination to have, sometimes that's because you're doing some shit you shouldn't be. It's generally not about you. Really accepting that is so helpful in life. And two is just plain fucking gratitude. I am so fucking lucky. Ooh. Okay, now I gotta try to figure out how to bury this mama. Like, I don't know. I'm not a therapist, and obviously there are things like depression and anxiety disorder, things that are real, things that you can't think away and just wish away and you'll go away all the time. But we have a lot of control over our perspective in life, and I work really hard on maintaining perspective. And that really enables me to have some free space in my brain to be creative, to be able to give a little bit to other people, to you know, be able to be there for my kids and stuff. Like, I just didn't have that when all I could think about was what I didn't have and how unfair everything was and how mean people were and blah, blah, blah. You can't be focused on that. So if that was what you meant, 
Um, I think that's what it is. I'm just really disinclined to give a lot of my energy to stupid bullshit. <laughs> so much room to be awesome when you don't give your energy to stupid bullshit. Let me tell you about how I planted and, and created an entire garden all while simultaneously not giving my energy to stupid bullshit. Okay, I definitely do not have enough soil for this and that is upsetting. Okay, I shoved the moss pole in here. Took a quick break filming. So now I'm gonna try and attach this to the pole. There's still a lot of white sticking out of the top of this pole. So I, I think that I will probably just get some more cocoa core and um, finish wrapping the pole later. But at least for now I can get it clipped in up to here and you know just to at least get some of this project done so lavender clouds asked what my favorite strain of weed or wax is um this is another one that i never have any answer for um half the time i'm not entirely certain what i have because i don't go to dispensaries often <laughs> <laughs> I will I will always remember how good Blackheart was. That was particularly delicious. Um, always be a fan of Blue Dream. Wonderful. I do intend to eventually start growing um, more uh, attentively and more seriously because um, just as a plant person, you know, like I just want to do it. Plant Decoop says, are you a magician? Because whenever I look at you, everything else disappears. Stop it. I love him. I'm gonna put his information down here. Y'all need to follow. The Dolph asks, would you rather have three boobs or three butt cheeks? Asking the tough questions. Hmm, difficult question because I don't really have much of a butt, so I figure maybe an extra butt cheek might give me a little something to hold my pants up back there, you know what I'm saying? But three boobs reminds me of Total Recall and that's way cooler. Well, that's twice as many places to get sweaty in the summer. Mm. The Dolph actually asked a few questions. They also asked me what the first band that I ever saw in concert was. I went to something called the WBCN River Rave. Uh, it was like a summer concert series that they did in uh, here in Massachusetts for a long time. I'm not sure if they still do it. But I remember uh, seeing presidents of the United States of America there. Pot USA, remember them? Millions of peaches, peaches for me. Um, but the first band that I ever intentionally went to see, as in bought a ticket, specifically went for one band, was Marilyn Manson. Oh, that looks nice. So I'm just using little pieces of a really soft shirt that I um, ended up cutting up because it got a hole in it. So this is a good way to tie up your plants without doing any damage to them. I found this is like the most gentle way to do it. Okay, I am so sorry about this. Please don't immediately die. Okay, so that piece wasn't quite long enough. Ooh, we get a nice, oh, look at that shot, yeah. The Dolph also asks if I've ever been into gaming, PC or console. I have. Um, when I was younger, I definitely liked video games. Um, definitely when I was a kid. That was basically all I did um, as a child when I wasn't outside. And I'm old, so that was like Nintendo Sega Genesis days. Uh, I remember when we got a PC, we had Duke Nukem 3D. Played a lot of that. The last games that I got pretty into were the original Animal Crossing on Wii and um, probably Silent Hill 2 was the last game that I really liked. but. Yeah, I got no issue with gaming. You do you, dude. But both of my children and my boyfriend, very big gamers. They, um, they're into that stuff for sure. I'm just not really. Oh, you know, I really like Spore on my computer too. I used to play that game a lot. You guys remember that game? But then I, I just, I started having to build like my actual life. And I think that just really took over all my will to build a life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay, here's the big vine. Wow, I didn't really realize how much of this plant was actually this one huge vine. I have no idea. Oh yeah, oh this is perfect. Okay. All right, mama. Please don't break. Oh wow. Look at, it. she's so, she's so big. I was really into The Sims too. Um, I don't remember which one I played a lot, maybe two or something like that. I was really into that. 
Ooh, Nightmare Creatures from Sega Genesis. Remember that one? That was a good one. So Simple Mom 2017 asked, do you see yourself doing vlogs as a full-time job? And she also asked what other work I do. And somebody also asked me what made me decide to do photography as a job. So I'll just lump all those together. Nerdy Kathy asked about the photography. So for Simple Mom's question, my other job uh, for a long time has been photography, primarily weddings, um, which <laughs> not a thing anymore, um, at least for a while. And I decided to do that because um, honestly, it was just out of necessity. I just, I was tired of being fired all the time and I was just starting out college. Just like needed a way to make some money that didn't involve working for someone that was going to capitalize on my entire schedule making it impossible for me to be with my children let alone foster this photography thing that i was trying to learn and get good at and then it turned out that i wasn't so bad at it after a while and people were actually willing to pay me to do it so i got this baby all tied up as you can see, it's like so sparse just because it was falling all over itself for so long that I think that this is really gonna help it put on some better growth. All right, so let's rapid fire through the rest of these questions. M's Plant Place asked what my favorite thing about homeschooling is. Um, definitely my son not being under the tyrannical thumb of the uh, industrial education complex. He still attends a public school, so he is still getting the same curriculum and he does still have to take the same tedious, stupid, and for-profit standardized tests. And his grades have come up, his understanding of the basic material has come up, his confidence has come up, and we get a ton more time together. That, and when they try to teach him some bullshit about Christopher Columbus, I can tell him the truth. In fact, he'll tell you himself. And he does. On the school message board. Also, him not being bullied by other people's unparented children. <laughs> and my beloved Aaron Deathly asked me, what is my dream weird plant species to own? Hmm, that is a good question. I would definitely love to have some more carnivorous plants. Uh, those are just really fun. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, buddy. You stumped me on that one. Alexis Krager, I think is how you say your last name. Um, if that's your last name. Alexis asked, what is the biggest difference you notice between indoor and outdoor gardening? Great question. Um, I think that outdoor gardening comes with the obvious benefits of being out in the sun and fresh air. I, I think that people grossly underestimate how much we need vitamin D from the damn sun. Um, and just being outside is, in my opinion, one of the better antidepressants, unless you're like one of those people that really just doesn't like being outside. I know a lot of people are like allergic to everything outside and you know, or they just, they just are uncomfortable outside for whatever reason. Most people aside, most people really get a nice benefit from being outside. So there's definitely that. Um, and I would say the other thing that I feel like is wonderful, like with houseplants, we are able to perhaps take things that are disappearing in the wild, keep them in cultivation, and then keep them from going extinct. I think that's a wonderful way to do something in the greater good with your houseplant collection. But I think that if you are fortunate enough to have a little bit of land outside to do what you want with, you can really change the habitat in your general area. You can help um, birds and insects that wouldn't normally be in your area have a place to exist. You can plant native plants that you know, are not here now for the most part because of invasive species bullying them out. So I think that there's a lot of ways that you can do universally good things, outdoor gardening, um, perhaps more than indoor gardening, but I also haven't really thought about it too deeply so I'm sure there's plenty you can do indoor too. I feel like I get a little bit of extra purpose out of outdoor gardening because I am trying to plant native and do things for pollinators as well as grow food for myself and my family which is very satisfying. My other beloved Rachel from Heart Shape Leaves asked what movie influenced you as a kid? Oh god I, I may not watch movies now but I will tell you when I was a child I was in a movie i mean just in a movie like i was watching um becca the other day i think on her live she was saying that she wanted to be an actress when she was a kid i was an actress as a kid I, I just, in my head i was so a lot of movies influenced me Spaceballs really informed what i thought was funny as a child um, my best friend introduced me to that movie when we were 
far too young to be watching it. Um, and that was an ongoing pattern with the movies that I liked. Uh, my dad also introduced me to horror movies when I was a kid, which I think gave me a little bit of my twisted sense of humor. Um, and then as a teenager, gosh, what did I love? Uh, still love Natural Born Killers. I don't care. I love that movie. Um, American Beauty was a, another big favorite of mine in my teen years. The Craft. Oh, come on. Loved The Craft. I was very fixated as a child on this made-for-TV version of Alice in Wonderland. And if any of you have seen it, you're going to know exactly what I was talking about because it was twisted as hell. Mm. Terminator 2, Sarah Connor, 100% made me a feminist. Oh, a spicy one. Let me take a swig here. Uh, Ruby Evans asked, are you married? If not, why? And sorry if that's too personal. No worries. I was married to my son's father. Uh, clearly, I'm not anymore. And I would say trying to get out of that marriage as a poor um, mother of two was so terrible and traumatic and difficult and expensive and stressful and long to two years. That really knocked the like ready to be a bride way out of me. So um, for most of my adult life since then, I have been pretty fine with not being married. Uh, other reason would be that somebody would have to want to marry me, which uh, Mike is not a big fan of marriage either. So um, involving the government to me is more of like a business decision that you do. So if you're with somebody and you guys want to own property together, you have children together, um, you want to make sure that that person's able to make medical decisions for you, maybe your parents are gone, uh, things like that. That's what sort of makes marriage make a lot of sense to me because otherwise, I mean, there's not a lot different, right? You're still together uh, all the time. You know, we, live, Mike and I live together. Um, our children consider each other siblings like we, you know, I just don't see a whole lot of difference that like a ring and a legal thing would do for that. But if it ever made sense on the legal end, then yeah, I would be for it. But I don't, I don't know if Mike would, to be honest with you. So, missed a tattoo question. The plant serial killer asks, "Who designs my tattoos?" and says, "They're beautiful." Thank you. Um, let's see. So, um, this one, this one, the kitty skull back here. This. And I think that's it. We're all from Steph Corbell and um, I'll actually link her down below. She has a YouTube channel right now about adulting. She just started it. It's fantastic. She's doing so good at it. Um, she is a superhero. When I met Steph, she was training to cross country run. She's like a long distance runner. She was going to raise all this money for a charity. Just a wonderful fucking person. She's a professor of music. She was teaching at a college. Um, just a really cool chick. She went through this just horrific life upside. I mean, just her entire life got turned upside down. And I just literally watched her just be broken and then put herself back together and then just go kick ass on the West Coast running her own businesses. Like really awesome chick. So highly recommend checking out her YouTube channel. Oh, I forgot this one too. She did that one too. So the one on my leg. So that one, that one, and a cat on my leg were all from my friend Corey. Uh, she is incredibly talented as well. I will link her Instagram down below. This one, this one, which was my first one, this one that I showed you guys earlier, and then the stars on my hand, those were all from my friend Zafira, um, who I will also link down below. Again, just th these women are fantastically talented, beautiful, lovely. This one right here is a piece from James Amston. His work is very uh, realistic, as you can see, really cool horror stuff. Um, so this one I sat for almost seven hours, I think, to get that one done uh, straight because we had to go to Maine to get it done. But uh, yeah, I love that one too. It says never get eaten. If you're wondering what it says, it's just kind of my personal life philosophy for a while. I sort of looked at life's trials and tribulations as zombies that chase you and you just got to outrun those bitches. You know what I'm saying? So don't be weird. My friend Vicky, uh, she asked if, should I organize the plants in my home by zone or would that make me a lunatic? I think that's incredibly genius and I don't know why I haven't done that. So that might make me one too. 
Daisy in the Jungle asked, what made you go from a casual plant owner to a crazy houseplant lady? Or an enthused collector, is what she said. <laughs> I got my first houseplant when I moved out of my parents' house for the first time. Like I immediately got a pothos, a devil's ivy, um, and I had it for a long time, almost 10 years, I think. So I've always had plants. I would always have five or six of them. Um, I think that my friend Corey, the one who does some of my tattoos, um, she was the first person that I saw have like a whole room of plants, like like a, a good, an obsessive amount of plants. Uh, she worked at a nursery, so she just, she just came home with a lot of plants. She had a garden outside, you know, just very planty lady. I think that she might have been the one that put the seed in my head of like, Ooh, I mean, if you like having five plants, wouldn't you love having 15? And then I think I started looking up plants on YouTube because I wanted to make sure I could take care of the ones that I was buying. And I think that's when I found Summer Rain Oaks. And then that, it was all over from there. I was like, that is what I want. That is what I want. I want leaves to hit me in the face all the time. Just leaves, Just leaves, leaves. Just Grow Damn It asked, what is my favorite book and any good book tips for quarantine? <sighs> I think about the hardest question you could ask me is what my favorite book is. I am a huge Kurt Vonnegut fan. I love Ray Bradbury. So like for fiction, I've been out of fiction for a little while. I tend to read mostly nonfiction now, but when I did read a lot of fiction, oh yeah, I, I absolutely loved Ray Bradbury, love Kurt Vonnegut. Uh, I was really into like dystopian novels, um, anything about the end of the world and things that are now no longer fun to read about because we're living them. <laughs> yeah. It's, mm. Book that I would recommend every human being on the entire planet read is a book called Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. And um, Brene Brown has done more for me than any therapist I have ever seen. And I really like her work because it's very unique in the sense that she talks about vulnerability and the fear of vulnerability and how much that affects every single thing we do as human beings. It is crazy. And let's see. So books for quarantine. I do have um, a video. I'll link it right here. Editing me right here for some of my favorite planty books um, that I have been reading lately that I've really enjoyed. I would say if you want to read a really cool book on plants, definitely check out The Revolutionary Genius of Plants. Great book. I'm reading this one right now. It's called The Alchemy of Herbs. And I'm reading, I picked this one because I want to know more about like the practical and health applications of herbs. But I do not want to get that information from people who do not believe in science or Western medicine or its place in anything. And I had a really hard time finding somebody who acknowledges that sometimes Going to the doctor is the answer. Her name is Rosalie De La Foret. I just finished this one, Creating Sanctuary by Jesse Bloom. Jesse Bloom used to be a roller girl, like in the roller derby. How cool is that? Um, so it's this one's a little, it's a little airy fairy. It's a little, it's a little woo woo. Um, but I did enjoy her ideas of what could be in a sacred space, in a garden space that would make you calm and enjoy yourself and stuff like that. And there's a lot of beautiful pictures and just some information on plants that I thought was very helpful. Oh, I didn't answer part of Simple Mom 2017's question. She asked if I see myself doing vlogs full time. Uh, no, I don't. It's not that I wouldn't enjoy that. I just can't, I can't see that being the only thing that I do because it just, it just doesn't make very much money. I definitely think that people think that YouTubers get a lot more money than they do. We really don't. It's, it's especially with AdSense, it's not a lot of money. Um, so it would be really difficult for me to do this as like a full-time job forever. Um, right now I'm treating it like one kind of because it's the only thing I can do. But I would always like to work in the plant space. So that that is definitely an end goal here. Um, I have a writing degree. I would like to write a book eventually. I'm not entirely sure which direction that book will be or if there'll be more than one or what, but um, that's a long-term goal. I would love to write about gardening. I would love to just do more to spread the love of plants. It's just, it's very important to me. I think that it's done so much for me and so much for so many of you that it's difficult to not want to spend the whole rest of your life talking about it. But even a lot of my photography is very nature and botanical inspired, you know, so it's, it's, it's always been my work and I think it always will be my work one way or another.
last question and that is can i see your pets can we see your pets we want to meet your pets i get a lot of questions about my pets so th this ginormous dude right here this is jack say hi jack yeah uh, Jack doesn't do a whole lot around here. Uh, he likes to knock plants over. He likes to watch the birds, uh, steal the other cat's food, and sleep in the rabbit's cage. He's, uh, he used to be the runt of the litter, if you can believe it. And this very fine lady who won't stop licking herself long enough for me to film her is Jamara, the love of my life, the star of my leg tattoo. Uh, it, it, the dumpster cat that came into my life, um, you know, about 12 years ago. Uh, she is a hot mess. She's on medication. She's 15 years old. But all her organs are good. Hi, huh, Mama? This little snuggy bucket right here is Shiloh, and she came from the non-adoptable section of a rabbit rescue. She hadn't been socialized yet, and they needed some room for an influx of baby bunnies that get dumped after Easter time. So um, I ended up taking her to foster, and as you can see, uh, she's still here. And she is no longer the grumpy, scared of people bunny that she used to be, huh? No, she's not. She's about 11 years old now. So she is actually, to my knowledge, the last living rabbit from that rescue. It's gonna be very sad when she's not with us anymore. Huh. You hang in there. And this little nugget right here is Lucifer, who we thought was a boy when we got her. Uh, my daughter actually brought her home without permission, and I'm a big sucker, so she's still here too. And uh, we found out she was a lady later on, so now she's Lucifer. She's Lucy for short. Um, also, big old snuggle bug, but she's always been like this. She is literally the friendliest rabbit ever. Huh. So there's my pets. Is it? I am exhausted. That was so long. This is going to take forever to edit. And thank you for hanging in if you did. If your question did not make it into the video, please feel free to ask it again down below and I will make sure to answer it the next time I go live. See you guys later. Bye.